What's up? Let me get my coffee real quick. Let me get my coffee. I got an apple and I got a coffee. Let me get my coffee. I'll be right back. Eric Brown, yo, RH. That's the same shit I was talking about. What you said was the same thing I was talking about with the power. Somebody with money can make your life, they can put all kind of lawyers in your life. Make it, that's what I was talking about with the power. Bamboo. Bamboo. <laughs> Czech Republic. Shout out to the Czechos. Czechoslovakia, Czech Republic, Czechoslovakia. You gotta have integrity, man. You gotta have integrity. You gotta have integrity. I gotta scratch my back. Hold up. Scratch my back with a stick. Goddamn stick I got off the ground. You gotta have integrity. You gotta have integrity. You gotta have integrity. Gotta have integrity. Integrity is strict personal honesty. Strict personal honesty, personal honesty. It's an honesty and a truth that you have with yourself that you won't break. These are these oaths. These are these oaths. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But they be lying. They be lying. It don't mean nothing to them to put their hand on a book and lie. This is just the, this is for show. This is theater. See, when you got integrity, it don't matter what you put your hand on. If you put your hand on something or not, it don't matter. It's a strict personal honesty. It's a um, it's a sealing to seal, to close off, to seal tight. Like now when you buy ketchup, when you buy ketchup from the store or you buy mustard, when you take off the top, there's like a uh a peel back seal on the top that lets you know that that particular bottle of ketchup or that particular bottle of syrup has kept its integrity as long as the seal hasn't been broken. If you take off the seal on a jar of mayonnaise and there's a break in the seal, 
that jar mayonnaise does not have integrity. Right? It's been broken. The seal has been broken. Integrity. It's a principle. You gotta be who you are all the time. All the time. All the time. You don't never get a day off. You don't never get a day off from being who you are in every situation. You don't never get a day off. See, what you don't want to be, what you don't want to be is a rock jumper. You don't want to be no rock jumper. You don't want to be no rock jumper. Don't be no rock jumper. You don't want to be no rock jumper now. Don't be no rock jumper. No, 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 no. You say what you mean and you mean what you say. Don't be no rock jumper. See, a rock jumper is a person that changes on you. They'll change given the circumstance and they'll do whatever is expedient and in their best interest in that very moment for themselves, even if it means breaking their seal of integrity. Breaking their seal of integrity. See a rock jumper, a rock jumper, when he, when he, when he hang out with these people, he'd be over here. He'd be a whole nother person. Then when something happened over there, he jump over the rock and then he become somebody else. Then when he need to be that over there, he jump over the rock, he come back here. Then he jump, you know, he a rock jumper. Don't be no rock jumper. Don't be no rock jumper. Stand on your square. Be a man wherever you stand. Be a man wherever you stand. You got to have integrity. And ha being integrity, having integrity, and living in integrity, you will, create rifts with people that you associate with. Because you're going to always tell the truth. You're going to always say what it is. Even when they need you to say something else. You're not going to be able to do that because you got integrity. You're going to say, well, listen, I can't I can't say that's what really happened. That That's what happened when I know what really happened. No, nah, it didn't go like that. It didn't go like that. No, it didn't. Yeah, but Sean, you my man. You my man. I've been knowing you a long time. You, you my man. Yeah. I know I'm your man, but I'm my man first. I'm my man first. I'm Sean's homeboy first. My loyalty is to me first before my loyalty is to you. My loyalty is to my conscience first before it's loyalty to them. My loyalty, my loyalty is to my heart first before my loyalty is to you. My loyalty is to my soul first before I'm loyal to you. And I only achieve this, and I only arrive at this point, 
A nigga in that car wearing a mask, he in there by himself and got a mask on. Well, I tell you, shoot him in the dome. Fool him, devil. Fool him, devil. Nigga riding in the car by himself with a mask on. You only can arrive at this point when you've promised yourself and when you've arrived at the destination of self-love and self-respect. When you know yourself and when you're comfortable with yourself and when you're true to yourself, when you're friends with yourself, when you love yourself, when you know that you are the only one that you got at the end of the day. And when you understand that peace of mind is best, then you understand that your integrity is high up on the list. It ain't low. You gotta have integrity, man. Certain things you'll do and certain things you won't do. Certain things you'll do, certain things you won't do. See, a lot of books, a lot of people have been influenced by written literature that advocates the practicing of deception. People have been influenced by written literature that encourages deceit and manipulation as a means to achieve The 48 Laws of Power is one of these books that I speak on. Deceptive sales practices. You can read whatever you want. You can follow whatever you want. I don't care. I really don't. But in my experience in life, and I've been living life a long time. Yes, I have. I've been living life a long time, long time. Deception and manipulation used to be in my tool belt. That was a part of my arsenal. That was a part of my arsenal. Deception, manipulation, lie, trickery. All of these things that they tell you that you must do in order to achieve power, in order to achieve your vision. Jerk people, stab people in the back, lie, cheat, steal, rape, pillage, do it all. subjugate all moral consideration for the attainment of the aim. I'm not of that camp. Machiavelli, Niccolo Machiavelli. How many of y'all read Machiavelli? I see you, Riaz. How many of y'all read Machiavelli? Niccolo Machiavelli. Niccolo Machiavelli was an Italian courtier. He was from Florence, Italy. And Machiavelli, in one of the books 
I read I read all three of his uh, most popular works: Niccolo Machiavelli, The Art of War; Niccolo Machiavelli, The Prince; Niccolo Machiavelli, The Discourses. And in these books, what Machiavelli does in The Prince and the Discourse is very good books. Um, he was a courtier, meaning that he was the scribe or the... Um, the author or the written scribe for the happenings. What he did was he got close to all of the Medicis. He got close to all of the Caesars, all of the great leaders of the Roman Empire. And what he did was he chronicled by writing down the various means and the various things they did to attain power whether it was through a coup whether it was through merit whether it was through war whether it was through attrition whether it was through trickery deception and he wrote all this stuff down and it's in the discourses in the prince very good book and he talks about the treachery that in some cases he says that some leaders have to resort to treachery in order to attain power and perpetually apply deceit and manipulation and lies and treachery and backstabbing and throat cutting in order to retain the power and he talks about it when he talks about the caesar of medici caesar borgia roman emperor louis king louis all these things he writes all this down as he was next to the court and i remember when i was a younger man and as you know, when you're a younger man, you're a dumber man. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. When I was a young man, I was a dumb man. Yes, I was. Yes, I was. You don't know it. You don't know it. You don't think so, but you be. And if you live long enough, you'll look back and say, damn, how dumb was I? But you got to make it here first. You got to survive first. You got to live. Some of y'all might not make it, you may die first. You're not guaranteed to get old. You're definitely not guaranteed to get old and look this good, like how I look. You understand? I look fantastic. I look fantastic. And in the art of war, I read the Art of War by Sun Tzu. I read The Art of War by Niccolo Machiavelli. And both books are written about war, but they both take a very, very different approach to defending the state, acquiring the state. Very, very different approach. Machiavelli says that in war, all moral considerations are to be subjugated 
The aim of war is to win and win by any means necessary. Trickery, treachery, cutthroat, lies, stabbing in the back, deception, manipulation, and all of that. On the other hand, Swan Tzu's The Art of War, an ancient Chinese military document, it's written more from a position of self-defense that you first fortify your state, you fortify your defenses, you have your troops aligned in battle arrays and battle um, um, formations. Your infantrymen, your battalion, your pikemen. You know, you're using strategy to thwart the aggression of another state. And as you know, defense is the best offense. And as you receive the enemy, then you move and you groove to what happens. And then when you see an opening, then you attack, you know? So it's whatever you wanna think, but the piece that I'm talking about in integrity and The mistake that I made, get him, Sean. Get him, Sean. The mistake that I made, get him, Sean. Don't cut him no slack. Don't cut him no slack. I'm talking to you. Don't you pause this live. I took a book. Dumb. I took a book that was written about war in the 18th, in the 15th century. And I was applying it to my life in 1995. Listen, listen how dumb I was, right? I'm taking a book about war between nations and I'm applying it to my life, my personal life in 1995, in my dealings in real estate, in my dealings with women, in my dealings with people, dumb, dumb. At this point, I'm easily influenced, right? And I'm misapplying the information. Similar to the way a lot of men in this world, all around the world, look at them four uh, ducks up there. They look at Scarface. Get him, Sean. They look at The Godfather Part One. They look at American Gangster. They look at Godfather Part Two. They look at Casino. They look at Goodfellas. And then they think that they can take what they see on a movie where they shoot scenes six, seven, 15 times, take it from the top. Ah, uh, action. Cut, cut, cut. You messed up your line, do it again. Action, take two. Cut, cut, you drop something on the floor. Take three, you ready? Lighting ready, cameraman ready? Ah, uh, shoot, action. Cut, cut. When are you gonna get the line right? Let's try one more time. Take 47. They shoot the scene 47 times. And then they take the best one out of the 47, put it in the movie and ignorant 
impressionable, low self-esteem men then look at this movie on a big screen TV and say, I'm gonna go out into the real world and do that. Shoot him in the dome. Dude. Fool him, devil. Fool him, devil. See, and I have been there. I have been there. Yes, I have. I've been there trying to be something that I'm not that I'm watching on a TV screen. Don't. Trying to behave in a manner and respond to a real life situation in my life based on what I see in The Sopranos. Don't. No integrity, no integrity. So the misapplication. Yo, Ant, what up? 973. The misapplication of stupidity and it goes further. It goes further. Don't you pause this video really easily influence low self-esteem men men that have no direction men that have no sense of self men that have no integrity really they're not even men they boys with beards and mustaches these are little boys with gray hair in their mustache and beard they will listen to look at how dumb this get the dumb rapper, he go and watch Scarface and Goodfellas. He dumb. He get in the record booth, the sound booth. The record company pay him 300000 He rich. He ain't never seen a day of nothing what it looks like on Goodfellas and Scarface. He got this money. He get in the booth and he start rapping about what he saw in Godfather Part 1 or The Sopranos of Goodfellas, a casino, changing it around to his neighborhood. He raps about it. They put the record out. And these grown boys with beards and mustaches listen to the dumb rapper. He lying, the rapper lot. They listen to the dumb rapper and try to go out into their life and emulate and copy what the dumbass rap nigga done said and the rap nigga done copied it off the TV. Dumb. 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 Easily influenced. And they make it shiny and attractive because he in the video now. He in the video now. They make it shiny and attractive. He's in the video now with a Mercedes truck. He's got scantily clad women in his video. And all kind of jewelry and money. And people will leave their true self They'll pawn their integrity and try to copy that rather than be, be they self. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. Yes, they will. I was one of them when I was young and dumb. Yo, Declan, I'm gonna call you right back. I'm on a live on YouTube. All right. 
so and the and and the basis for this is not being comfortable with who you are. Trying to be somebody else and something that you not. You trying to be that. Yes, you are. But it took me a long time. It's a painful existence when you try to be somebody that you're not. And you just come as you are. It's so much more peaceful when you can come as you are because ain't no lies being told. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no lies being told. Hmm? Ain't no lies being told. Got to tell the truth. Got to tell the truth. Got to tell the truth. That's real manhood when you can tell the truth. When you can speak the truth under any circumstance, that's manhood. And when I speak about that, what come people that come to mind are Richard Pryor. Muhammad Ali. Kanye West. Charleston White. See, these are men. They don't, they don't bob and weave. They don't get off the bike of who they are. They ride their bike. See, when you can speak your truth, uh, when you can speak your truth, you a man then, Jack. R.H. Say what it is, especially when you're dealing with women. And ladies, I know y'all on here too. When you're dealing with men, say what it is. Tell the truth. They may not like what they hear, but they got to respect it. 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 Y'all hear them birds? What's up? Be who you are. Be who you are, man. What else y'all want to talk about? Yo, Riaz, what you want to talk about, man? Eric Brown, what up?
I got a little Sean sneakers on. Look at little Sean sneakers. Little Sean designed these. Look at what the tongue say. Little Sean. Integrity heavy top, but can't add to it. Yeah. I ain't sell, I was gonna sell these sneakers, but I ain't gonna sell. Look at that big ass dog over there. I was I was gonna sell them, but the quality ain't no good, so I ain't gonna I ain't gonna sell them. Yo, Mr. Sight. Mr. Sight. Oh, my sight. My sight. What's up, my sight? Give me a topic, man. Thank you for that super chat, man. I'm gonna let my sight give us a topic to talk on, man. Give me a topic, man. I was gonna sell these for $200, but the quality ain't good enough. And it, it was too involved. I'm gonna have to take a trip to like Vietnam and go over there and buy me like 30 pair. You know what I'm saying? Wear them, you know what I'm saying? And ship them back. This is, this is too involved. So I didn't wanna make more work for myself than what I need to. And I don't like to ship product that ain't no good. They good, but they just ain't good enough for me. You understand? They money though, I wear them though. I look good in them. I look good in them. They look good on my feet. I was watching some Jackson 5 videos today. Man, you couldn't beat the Jackson 5, man. Yeah, your girl bought three hoodies. The girl bought three hoodies. The hoodies ain't 200 no more. The hoodies is $325 for the hoodie, man. Your girl, when she come by my crib, she like to come over there with my crib in your car. She come over my crib in your car and she like to get the hoodie on and walk around in her panties with the hoodie on, sucker. You got the fake profile name, you copying and nothing. See, this is a dude, there's no integrity. Here's an example. Here's an example, Elon Tusk. So he tried, you know, Elon Musk. Suckers, man, suckers. You could have let it stay up there. Who hit him upside the head with the wrench? Yeah, Quan hit him upside. Quan, you could have let the sucker boy stay up there. His girl come through, hold on a second. Hello? Yeah, what's up, baby? Yeah, he right here. Nigga just hit him upside the head with the wrench. Why he call himself that? Self-esteem low? Shit low. He live in his mother's basement. He be down there jerking off, watching porn all day. Getting high. So what you with him for? Oh, he give you all his money. He give you his whole check. He give you his whole check. Oh, your girlfriend want to buy a hoodie now? Your girlfriend? Okay. Two of your girlfriends want to get a hoodie. Okay, all right. Well, get his credit card and come through. I'm going to get it. We're going to charge it on his car. He's going to pay the bill to end the money anyway. All right, baby. Yeah, I know you love me. Yeah, bring me something to eat. Some collard greens, some black eyed peas. But make sure they put the smoked neck bones, the pork smoked neck bones in the collard greens and some cornbread and come through. What color paintings you got on? All right, hurry up, hurry up. Right. That's what it is. Yeah, come on my live, don't come on my live I'm trying to interrupt my live, can't do that. Shout out to NJIT, man. Shout out to the New Jersey Institute of Technology. 
I did my master's degree at NJIT. I did my master's degree at NJIT. I got a master's of science and finance. So on the level of an MBA, probably even a little higher than an MBA because it was very concentrated in finance. An MBA is a master's of business administration. You got to take all this and that. My shit was a master's of science in financial management. So it was like all finance. I got my master's down there, the school down there. No. I finished with a 3.27 GPA. I graduated cum laude. I graduated cum laude. Yes, I did. I was working full time during the week up in the corporate world, up in Parsippany, New Jersey. I was putting together million dollar mergers and acquisition deals during the week. And then on the weekend, I went to grad school on Saturday. I would go to school on Saturday from nine to 12. I had an hour break. Then I had another class from one o'clock to four o'clock in the afternoon. I was in my, how old was that? 1995, I was 26. I was 26. I was 26. I would go, I would go to class on Saturday. It would be so much information. The study would be so intense. I would come out of class with a headache. Yes, I did. Yeah, that shit was real, baby. That shit was real. But I finished them. I started it and I finished. If I start something, I finish it. I graduated in 1997. I was 28. The company that I was working for in the corporate world, they paid for my, they paid for my master's degree. They paid with the tuition reimbursement. New Jersey Institute of Technology. Yep. I'm smart. I'm smart. I'm very intelligent. I ain't no dummy. Fuck that. I know how to read. I know how to count. I know how to write. I know I'm 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 up to snuff, man. I ain't never been no dumb nigga. I always been smart. My behavior ain't always been the best. But up on the dome, I'm money. Yeah, I got a master's degree. I graduated cum laude. Yes I did. Yes, I did. Y'all wanna know how I got in there? I told you the story about how I got in there. I ever told you the story how I got into grad school? I didn't take no GMAT or no GRE. I didn't take no GMAT. I told you the story how I got in there. Let me get my apple. Hold up. Stay right there. Let me get my apple. Stay right there. Boy, this is one of them good ones, man. This is one of them crispy apples when you bite it. When you bite it. It pop. Yep. I'm real smart. I like being smart. You get a lot of pussy if you smart. Listen, if you smart, You gonna get all the pussy. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. Zo motion, zo motion over in Germany. That's Germany right there. Zo motion.
women are attracted to intelligent men always has been always will be yes sir always has been and always will be Woman don't want no dummy, man. She don't want no dummy. What can she do with a dummy? You gotta be smart. You gotta be smart like me. I'm smart. I used to win all the spelling bees, all the math bees. When I was in second grade, third grade, first grade. I was the best. I've been the best a long time, man. I used to get straight A's in school. Straight A's and B's. That's it. I was smart. I just made some bad choices. Man, this apple good, man. I ain't never told y'all the story how I got how I got into grad school. What the hell was that? Y'all heard that? Don't y'all let nothing sneak up on me, man. Don't let nothing sneak up on me. Y'all want me to tell you a story or what? Huh? Yes or no? You want me to tell you a story? Yes or no? Huh? All right, so look, I'm going to tell you the story, man. Y'all ain't saying nothing. So I had got my undergraduate degree from Morris Brown College down in Atlanta. I got my undergraduate degree in accounting, bachelor's of science in accounting. I graduated from Morris Brown with a 2.8 grade point average. 2.8. I didn't do well in undergrad because I was getting high a lot. I was smoking a lot of weed, sniffing a lot of cocaine, smoking crack, drinking liquor every day. I got high every day. So I didn't do well in undergrad, but I was still money though. I was still the best though.
man. I'm good, man. So, I got my undergraduate degree at Morris Brown, Morris Brown College is an HBCU, a historically black college and university, meaning everybody in the school black, the president black to the janitor black, everybody, all the teachers, everybody, it was some white students there, Omari T, there was some white students there, some Spanish, but it was mostly niggas though. Africans from Africa, Caribbean, but mostly foundational black Americans like me. Morris Brown is the best school in the world. You know why? Because I went there. That's why it's the best. So I got my degree, but while I was in Atlanta, because I went there, so while I was in Atlanta, my drug addiction took off. I ended up going to rehab in Atlanta. I dropped out of school. I was getting high as a kite every day. I couldn't even go to school no more. I couldn't even go to class. I couldn't concentrate. I stayed high, destroyed my life. I stayed high and drunk every single day. Every single day I was in college up until I, when I got clean. So, um, I ended up going to rehab. I went to a 28 day program. I got clean and I never got high no more after that. I've been clean now over 32 years straight. Excuse me. I ain't got high in 32 years straight. Never relapsed. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't sniff, I don't do nothing. But after I got clean, I started selling drugs in Atlanta. Dumb. I was dumb. 21, 22 years old, young and dumb. 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 And I got busted. So I caught a felony. I caught a felony. So here I am graduating from Morris Brown at 23. I got a bachelor's of science degree in one hand and a felony drug charge in the other hand. <sighs> Dumb. So, it was already gonna, uh, it was already gonna be tough to get a job anyway, cause I don't got the complexion for the protection. And then I went and put a felony on top, made it even worse, made it even harder on myself. I did that to myself, that was my fault. That was my fault. I did that. My mother didn't teach me to do that. My mother didn't teach me to sell drugs. My mother didn't teach me to drink. My mother didn't teach me to get high. I did that myself. I chose that, dumb. So. I come back to New Jersey and now I want to go to graduate school because I say like, yo, if I get a master's degree, if I get a master's degree and I got the bachelor's and the master's, that'll kind of overshadow the felony. So I'm filling out applications to all these grad schools, New York University, University of Michigan, Rutgers University, Harvard University. I'm filling out applications to go everywhere. Nobody showing me no love. Showing me no love. I told y'all this story already. How many? How many of y'all know this story already? How many of y'all know this story already? I told y'all this story already. get the apple out my teeth. Hold up. I told y'all this story already. Yes, I did. Rod D, what up? 
Um, look at that smoke. So I'm caddying at the golf course. I'm caddying at the golf course right over here. Uh, all white members, no black members, no Spanish members, no Asian members, all white Anglo-Saxon Protestant, all wasp, no Jews, nobody. I'm just saying that just for illustrative purposes, just to let you know the setting. I don't got no problem with nobody. I don't care what your religion is, what color you are, where you're from, where you live. I'm still better than you. Don't matter to me. I don't care where you are. I'm better than all 8 billion of y'all. So I'm carrying over there and I go one day to get my loot. Caddy master say, Sean, get them two bags right there, them yours. So boom, I go get the bag, boom. Cause I carry two bags. I carry two bags. I'm like this. I carry two bags. I carry two bags, I carry double loot. So I get out on the golf course and I'm talking to my man who I'm caddying for, white dude. He like Sean, you know, we out there kicking the Willy Bobo. We out there kicking the Willy Bobo. You know, I'm doing my thing. I'm out there talking, you know, politicking, networking. And, you know, we start kicking the Willy Bobo. And somehow, you know, grad school came up. So I was like, yeah, man, you know, I'm trying to get into grad school, this and that. And, uh, Boom, boom, bang, ain't, you know what I'm saying? Ain't getting no rhythm, you know what I'm saying? So my man who I'm caddying for is a Jew. I know his name. I know his name. Richard Schatzberg. Richard Schatzberg, that was his name. It's Jew, Jew boy. That club didn't even allow Jewish members. It was white Anglo-Saxon, but so Jews couldn't even be members there. But he was up there as a guest of one of the members. So he was up there and uh, he said, uh, he said, uh, we out there kicking it. You know, I'm chilling like Matt Dillon, ain't robbing, ain't stealing. I'm doing my thing. And he said, he said, Sean, I'm a professor at NJIT in Newark. We have a graduate program down there. I said, oh yeah. So, you know, I'm super smooth. I'm super fly. You understand? You know me. My mouthpiece, my mouth game is money. You understand? So by the time we got finished playing the 18 holes, you understand? He said, Sean, he said, call me on Monday. This was a Saturday. This was a Saturday. So he said, man, call me Monday. I'll be in the office on Monday. Monday morning, Monday morning at 9.01. You know what I did? You know what I did? I know you know what I did. I know you know. I know you know what I did. I know you know what I did. I did what my mom said I was going to do. I called him. He picked up the phone. I said, yo, Richard, what's up? This is Sean. I caddy for you Saturday. He said, Sean, come down here right now. Now nah, you could have left him up. Who that, Quan? Quan, leave the suckers up, Quan. I mean, if they ain't getting too disrespectful, leave the suckers up so they can see how much of a sucker they are, man. We got to expose the suckers. He said, Sean, come down here right now. Man, I jumped in my car. I used to drive a stick. I had a stick. 
I had a Honda CRX, the little yellow joint. Hit the clutch. So I ride down, I ride down the north. I ride down the north. I go up to his office. I knock on the door. I said, Richie, what's up? He got up from his desk. He said, Sean, follow me. So I'm following him. I'm following him. He took me down to the admissions office. This is a true story. This is a true story. He took me down to the admissions office. He walked up to the desk. The girl came over. She says, can I help you? He says, uh, yeah, I'm Richard Shasberg. I teach such and such, such and such. She says, he's, he told her, he said, register Sean as a non-matric for the fall 1995 School of Management master's program. And the girl's name was Bridget. The girl's name was Bridget, black girl, Bridget Shamshadeen, she was Muslim. And Bridget went and got the paperwork, she said, <laughs> Cause it wasn't no, it wasn't no, it wasn't no computers like that, that back that then. Computers wasn't real heavy. You had to fill out the paperwork. She went and got the paperwork. She gave it to me. She said, fill this out. She said, fill this out. He stood right there. He stood right there. The whole time. That Jew boy stood right there. What the fuck is that? over there throwing something down on the ground. <laughs> I thought it was something coming out of these bushes, man. So I'm filling everything out. I'm filling everything out. I give it to him. He's standing right there. She go. She enrolls me. She enrolls me into the School of Management. She registers me. And I'm in row. Tito Smart, how do you get into those rich circles? Golf caddy is a great way to get opportunities. Tito Smiles, thank you for the super chat. She said, Sean, she gave me the paperwork. She said, boop. And I'm looking at this shit. I'm like, oh, snap. She looking, she like, Sean, you registered for the four. You registered for the four. I'm looking at this shit. I'm like, oh, snap, right? I'm high as a kite, right? So me and Richard walk out. I'm registered. He said, Sean, he looked at me. He looked at me. He said, look, you registered as a non-matric, which means you are not in the program yet. You are not in the school of management yet. He says, your first two semesters, if you get any grade lower than a B, you out of the program. You get any grade lower than a B, you out of the program. Come on, man. What you think I did? What you think I did? You think I got something lower than a B? Yeah, all right. Fool them, devil. Yeah. Ooh, devil. Man, I didn't make nothing. I didn't make nothing lower than the B. The B was the lowest I went. That's how I got my master's degree. I didn't have to take no GMAT. I didn't have to take no interest exam. I didn't have to do no interview. I didn't have to do nothing except go caddy at the golf course. Because my interview was when we was on the golf course. I finished up that master's program with a 3.28 grade point average, man. Come Lord, I graduated with honors, man. I don't fuck around, man. I don't play. I don't play around, man. I don't play around. I don't jerk around with my life. 
I don't waste time. Nah, that was an opportunity, man. Homeboy gave me an opportunity on the silver platter. He said, yo, boom, this for you, kid. I said, yo, uh, thank you. Yes, I did. Yep. And, and the job that I had, check this out. This is how good God is, right? The job that I had, I was working in the corporate world. Remember I told you I had the felony conviction from Atlanta. I'm on the golf course. This is another time. One of the members at the golf course, Polish guy, white dude, Ray Jizerski. Ray Jizerski, Jin Dobre. Jin Dobre. I'm caddying for, I'm caddying for Mr. J. I used to call him Mr. J. Every time he came out, he saw me, he said, Sean, get my bag. Always gave me a fat tip. Gave me the fat tip. Gave me tall dollars. So he said, Sean, you got your degree. Why are you, why are you still caddying at the golf course? I said, Mr. J, I got a felony conviction, man. I caught a felony down in Atlanta, man. He said, man, give me your resume. He said, give me your resume. So back then, this is like 1994, 95. You had to go type up your resume, put it on cotton paper and all that. Y'all don't know nothing about that. So I got my resume together. I gave it to him, bang. He get me a job. He get me a job with this hotel company up in Parsippany in the accounts receivable department, in the accounting department. Right? And I still, I had an open case in Atlanta. I had an open case. And I told him, I said, Mr. J, man, I got this felony and I got an open case in Atlanta. I got to go back to jail, man. I got to go to Atlanta and go to jail in October because I had got busted. I got busted with a half ounce of crack in Atlanta. I got busted with a half ounce of crack. This after I got clean, I was selling crack. So they sentenced me to, I sat in Fulton County Jail, right where they got Young Thug at, where Gunner got out, when Gunner ratted, and he got out, Fulton County Jail. Them niggas fighting there every day, man. I had to, I, I was sitting in there, I sat in there about a month. No, I sat in there, how long I sat in there? I sat in there maybe two months. And um, my sentence was, I had to go to jail every year for three years in the month of December. So I told him, I said, Mr. J, man, I gotta go to jail in October. He said, Mr. Bonanza Brand, sweetest Krona. My man gave me the sweetest Krona, 50 sweetest Krona. So um, he said, Sean, don't worry about that. So he called up, white dude, white man, I'm a nigga. This is in 1994, 95. He called up to the company. I caddy for him on the go. He sent me up there. He said, I'm sending Sean up there. He called me and said, Sean, you got an interview next week. Go up there. So I go up to the interview and I'm like, man, they not gonna hire me, man. Because I had been trying to get jobs. I got fired from the bank. I was working with this bank down in North First Fidelity Bank. They ran my background, so I had got convicted of a felony. They fired me, even though it wasn't financially related. So I was like, man, ain't nobody gonna never hire me, man. So I go up to the interview and I sit down, boy was born. I tell the girl, I say, look, man. I said, I got a felony conviction. Soon as I sat down, because I don't want to waste no time. Don't waste my time. I ain't gonna waste your She said, Sean, don't worry about that. White girl, white girl. She said, Sean, don't worry about that. I said, well, listen, I got to go to jail uh, next month too. This was like August, September. I got to go back to it, I got to go to jail. 
You know what I'm saying? So let me know what you go. Don't tell me now. She said, Sean, don't worry about that. So we do the interview. I leave. They hired me. They hired me. They hired me. They hired me because of the pull that Mr. J had because he had sent a whole bunch of people up there. He had a relationship with them. And he trusted the reputation of his firm and his name enough for me to refer me up there for a job. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And when I got on that job, when they hired me, October came up. I told him, I said, listen, I got to go. This was 1995. This was the same year as the Million Man March. Remember the Million Man March? Farrakhan did the Million Man March in DC. That's when it was, because my first day at work, I think was the day of the Million Man March and I didn't go. I wanted to go, but I, I, I had to go to that job because they gave me a shot. My man had put me on. I could not go. So October came around. I went, I told her, I said, listen, I got to, I got to go to Atlanta. Monday, I got to report the Fulton County Jail on Wright Street. She said, okay, Sean, she was my boss. She said, all right. She said, call me when you get out. I drive to Atlanta, take my car, left my car by my punk ass brother house. Sucker ass nigga, I'm gonna fuck him up when I see him. Punch that nigga right in his face when I see him. I go to Fulton County Jail. I sit in there 30 days, I get out. I go get my car. And I think I went to a pay phone. I went by, I don't know where I called it from, but I called a job. I said, yo, Beth, she says, hi. I said, Beth, this is Sean. She said, hi, Sean, how you doing? I said, I'm all right. I said, I just got out. And I'm thinking she was going to say, well, you ain't got no job here no more. She said, well, you on your way up here? You coming back to work Monday? I said, hell yeah, I'll be back. Click, hung up the phone, jumped in my car. <laughs> Drove all the way from Atlanta back to Jersey and went to work. I stayed on that job. I stayed on that job like three years. I got promoted from accounts receivable to the compliance, to the legal department. I was working in compliance, putting forward, putting, putting together agreements, third party agreements, amendments, all of that, which strengthened my legal background. I know how to draft agreement. What the fuck is going on here? I know how to draft agreements. I stayed in the compliance department for a little while, and then I got a promotion to the mergers and acquisitions department where I was doing, I was a financial analyst, and I was doing mergers and acquisitions, acquiring real estate companies all over the country. I must've did about a hundred deals, more than a hundred deals, over $10 billion in sales. And I used to put them deals together by myself. I was that nice. Yep. And when I went to go for my master's degree, the company that I was working for paid for it. So look at, look at, look at how God works. That's why I don't judge people by their skin color. I'm not on that white, black shit, that Latino and Asian and black and all that. Oh, he did see that. I'm not on none of that because a lot of people done helped me in my life, you understand, that didn't look like me, that wasn't my skin color, and a lot of people done fucked me over in my life that was my skin color and have helped me too. I don't look at no color, I look at the person. You know what I'm saying? And that's how I got my master's degree. That was the story. Y'all like that story? That's a true story. That's a true story. That's my life. This is my real life.
That's my real life. That's a true story. You up out of here, punk. Get your fake ass out of here. Tell your girl I'ma see you later, man. She keep calling me, man. Chunk. So that's what it is, man. Let me get up out of here. It's getting cold, man. It's getting cold, man. Anybody got any questions, man? I want to thank everybody for... I want to thank everybody for uh, the Super Chats today. Anybody got any questions, man? Anything else you want to talk about? Before I get up out of here. Anybody got anything they want to say before I get up out of here? Because it's cold out here. Go get you one of these scullies, man. Go get you one of the scully joint. Look at that. The fleece joint. That's the fleece. Fleece. Look at my beard, man. My beard is all that, man. My beard is all that. I got the best beard in the world, man. Don't nobody in the world got a better beard than me. My beard better than everybody's beard. My beard the best. Yo, Quan, what up? Yo, Quan, what up? All right, y'all. Peace.